For those who are politically wise, a show about the lives of Christians in Ohio involved with politics. Introducing your host, Reverend Thomas Greetings, my fellow patriots, saints, and sinners. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. At the end of the show, there will be a blessing. Don't miss it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Next time you're thinking about beating the train, think again. It takes a typical freight train traveling 50 miles an hour. One and a half miles to stop. That's nearly 18 football fields. Don't try to beat the train. Ohio's roads can be highways or dieways. The choice is yours. A message from Operation Lifesaver and this station. The opinions and statements on this show belong to those who give them. The rest of the show belongs to Thomas Wise Words, all rights reserved. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Hello, my listeners. This is Reverend Thomas Wise. The show is called Politically Wise. It is my honor to interview a longtime friend of mine, Representative Roland Winburn. Representative, please tell my listeners about yourself. Well, first of all, I want to thank you very much for inviting me to come on your show today and tell you a little bit about my daily interactions in Columbus and also in my district here, the 43rd House District. Um, a little bit about me and my background. I was born and raised here in the Dayton area uh, in the city of Dayton. Uh, later, I moved to Harrison Township, where I per- presently reside. Um, I have lived outside the city a little bit uh, in Detroit and a little bit in Washington, D.C., uh, and I wanted to, uh, to also live down in Cincinnati to go to the University of Cincinnati, but having kids and my house didn't sell, I stayed here in Dayton, so I, I guess that was a good omen, uh, uh, for me, and God wasn't ready for me to, uh, live, uh, leave the city of Dayton and, uh, had other works for me. Um, I be- began in politics, uh, as a Harrison Township trustee in 2001. I served as a Harrison Township trustee for over, uh, seven and a half years. Uh, then I, uh, uh, moved into Harrison, as I moved into Harrison Township, uh, I began, uh, to be involved in a number of neighborhood, uh, associations and interacting with a, a number of neighbors. And uh, on my own uh, neighborhood watch area, I, I guess I went into meetings and began to interact and engage and talk uh, quite a bit about uh, things and, and had opinions about things. And uh, some of the members of my neighborhood watch asked me to run for Harrison Township trustee. Um, I thought no, <laughs> uh, because I was new to the community at that time and didn't feel that uh, it was something that I should do. Um, as well as that uh, there was another individual before me who had also uh, uh, a, a said that he wanted to run for it, and I thought it was too late. Uh, but a number of community leaders came and asked me to uh, pursue that particular position, and they got behind me, and I ran a couple of times. And uh, some of the people wanted to see how well I ran uh, ele- uh, election campaigns. And as a result of those kind of things, uh, the uh, leadership at Harrison Township asked me to be on their uh, community visioning pro- uh, process. And uh, then later on, one of the trustees uh, decided to retire, and then I was appointed as trustee uh, from that point on. Um, early on in my uh, working there at, at Harrison Township, I became uh, uh, involved with uh, the uh, adult entertainment business there in the township. And as a result of that, talking to our state representative at that time, uh, both Tom Roberts and then again with uh, Representative Strayhorn. Um, they saw how um, involved I was, and um, I guess I brought something to the table. And uh, later on, uh, unbeknownst to me, um, as Fred Strayhorn's term uh, uh, was ending, uh, he asked me if I would consider running for state representative. Again, I said no at that time, and then I began to think about my age and other opportunities that come down the way. And, you know, I guess that was a God sent kind of message as well um, in regards to that and all the other experiences and preparations and so forth and my interactions with Columbus. And and uh, um, sometimes you look at 
people who preceded you with uh, Tom Roberts, both he and I go to the same church and we grew up together in the Catholic schools and so forth. So knowing him, knowing his role there at the state and having uh, knowledge with Fred Strayhorn, um, I said, you know, this might be the best time in my life. I felt so there was a timing concern or issues. We often talk up to other people about things and timing. I guess that was my time to do that. And I said, yes, ran a successful campaign and, uh, Nearly six years later, here I am as a state representative, and this this year will be my election year to run for my fourth and final uh, eight-year total terms that I'm available to run. So I hope I'm successful this year in running for my uh, last term as state representative. Wife? Kids? Yes, I do have those. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm married to my wife now since uh, I have to think about the years right now, right? Uh, since 1969, so I think we're somewhere... Uh, in the neighborhood of 40 some odd years, 45 or 46 years at this point. Um, and we have two adult children, um, and we have four, uh, grandchildren. Uh, my, uh, daughter, uh, lives over in the Indianapolis area and, uh, both there, they have two children, my son and uh, his family lives here in the Dayton area. <laughs> And we will be right back after the break. To some people, they're just a pet, a dog or a cat. But to you, they're part of your family. They've shared your lives, provided companionship, and given unconditional love. And just like when a human family member passes on, you want your four-legged family members to be treated with dignity. Baker Hazel and Snyder Funeral Home and Crematory has been caring for families since 1941 and now offers the same level of service for your pets at Snyder Pet Crematory. Call 274-1151. 274-1151. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. So how does your faith play a role in all this? Uh, every day. Um, you know, there's opportunities in the House, as you're well aware of, to have uh, times where uh, legislators can come together and pray together and talk about th their values and their interests uh, as it pertains to their own religion and how it fits in their everyday life and how they interact with people. Um, you know, I try to, I guess the, 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 the golden rule, treat other people as you want to be treated is always the, my guiding principle in, in a lot that we do. Um, I've early on, uh, wanted to, um, uh, have a, a decent relationship with, with my colleagues that I came in with and hopefully with other individuals. And that it's important to be able to be open, to be engaging and to be respectful of another, another person. Uh, regardless of their, um, val with their political values and positions on things, um, there's more to it than that. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's that personal relationship that you have that you, you don't get negatively and, and problematic and personal with people is that, you know, you, I wouldn't want that done to me and I don't want to do that to anybody else. So those are my guiding principles, uh, largely. Um, I grew up as a Catholic, still a practicing Catholic. Uh, I also belong to the Knights of St. Peter Claver, um, a fourth degree there. Um, so, uh, and I also wanted to be a deacon at one time, but, uh, the training was long and it's kind of difficult for me to do the training and so forth. So that still interests me to be involved there, but primarily, uh, the teachings, uh, the, uh of Christ, uh, the, um, I, Usually, uh, because we had a large Jewish um, uh, con uh, population here in the northwest area of the Dayton area, um, I try to be stay involved with the Jewish community and understand their religion. Um, I'm very close to a number of people who are uh, who are Muslim uh, and who study uh, their faith um, as well. And uh, for the most part, all these faiths are really concerned about the well-being and spiritual well-being of our community and, and of individuals. So I tend to kind of talk to uh, a lot of people and be open to those, try to understand their their religion and, and what they tend to want to focus upon in, in our community to make our, our world and our, our, our individuals better. So well, tell me what a good day and, a, and then on the other side of that, what a bad day in politics <laughs> are for you. Sometimes it's all that, <laughs> both good days, good times and bad times in a day. 
uh, a good day uh, is uh, getting off of Route 70 and making it into into Columbus uh, with the traffic and with the number of trucks that are on the road and people sometime uh, move out of their own specific lane or want to uh, tailgate you and and so forth uh, and sometimes I I have to admit that sometimes I get late uh, in, in going up there so sometimes I want to be a little bit more aggressive in getting there uh, but you have to be mindful of those kind of things and and sometimes that begins your day in terms of how you get there safely if you uh, uh, have enough time to get there and allow for your time rather than rushing and so forth that when you get there you're, you're a few minutes behind and you don't have the papers or you haven't prepared yourself for what's in front of you in terms of the committees or knowledge about the bills or have you read that bill analysis for what's in front of you can you pay a lot of attention to the presenters when they're given the testimony um, how you frame a, a question or a uh, want to address a particular issue as a person is, is talking about from their perspective and what they either want to support that bill or not support that bill. So a, a lot of times as you get instant feedback, if you will, from uh, your colleagues or from the testifiers who are giving their or your interaction with the lobbyists and so forth. So a good day is that Man, somebody comes up to you afterwards. That was a good question. You know, I didn't think of that. Thank you very much for your input. Um, you have another colleague who some comes up with you and says, I want to work with you about things. Uh, uh, you seem to be able to look at things critically and very thoughtfully and so forth. Um, uh, those are good days to me. You know, our days are somewhere between 12 to 14 hours. Uh, days, you know, they, if you get, start off early in the morning at seven thirty, eight o'clock meetings, and you you have meetings and committee meetings and caucus meetings and hearings and so forth, uh, sometimes going to the, the six o'clock, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock times at times, depending upon what the issues are before you, or how many you have testifiers. So those are good days when I can come home and say, man, I did something good today, or something came at me that's very good today, or somebody somebody believed in what um, I had, or we were talking about, or we're now talking about bill development or legislation development, and that's a good idea, um, and I want to work with you about that. Bad days uh, sometimes is uh, when you're in committee and you want to uh, offer an amendment and you get it tabled. Uh, sometimes there's a legislation that you don't agree with uh, and that the rationale is doesn't fit, and uh, you want to blow up, you want to... Um, Say something to someone that uh, that would discourage them from moving forward with that, or you you can't seem to get your idea across, or your understanding across. It doesn't fit for the other individual, and and they keep on throwing back to you as if you know you're uh, invisible, or if it's not meaningful, or, or that's not what we want to do, and so forth. So those are the, some of the bad days, um, I think, for me. I always admire being to sit there and listen to the same testimony said a different way for the fifth time, you know, <laughs> yes. and, and not get up and walk out and punch somebody. Yes. I have always admired that about you. Know, yes. It is, yes. It's a learned skill. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, you know, particularly about the guns, uh, issue, uh, which is, uh, uh, something we had a gentleman who testified from his perspective to have a gun in the suburban areas, in the more urbanized, more populated areas. Uh, he, his position was, I want to, uh, shoot these little varmints. Well, uh, you know, as if a bullet misses the intended object, it goes somewhere. Um, and if you make it available, in my opinion, to other people who are, may do negative things with those kind of, uh, tools, um, uh, those kind of things, and then it makes it, it's more problematic. You, you know, I think one of the arguments is that law abiding people, will not do those kind of things, but there are criminals who do. And even law-abiding people, I think there was a, just recently a, the gentleman who was a, a, a sheriff down in, in Florida, I think it was, a former police officer who got angry with a person for having their uh, um, phone in, in a movie theater. I'm sure he was a law-abiding person, but look what happened. And so uh, th those kind of issues sometimes are, are, are difficult uh, for me to... Um, come to grips with so what what advice would you give somebody following in your footsteps uh, I think about that a lot because uh, I believe in succession planning and so I have a tendency to look at individuals who I think are uh, up who, who up up starters who I think would have value and who are 
verbal and who uh, have good ideas, who think outside the box a lot of times. So what I look at is you never know what opportunities will come at you like me who came, you know, things that came to me. So you have to prepare for those things. Of course, you don't want to uh, to do anything that's going to be against the law and begin to have a record. So I always say that you're always going to come to crossroads. You know, think about your behavior and your actions and how you're going to deal with that, because if it becomes negative or criminal or whatever, uh, then that will follow you for the rest of your life. Uh, the golden rule, uh, you know, treat, treat other people as how you would like to be, be treated. Um, be a person who is, um, um, in, in a room of unknown people. Get to know somebody. Uh, talk to them. Um, you know, try to find out about issues, both sides of the issues, if you will. Um, if you want to get involved in politics, it's good to have, um, uh, a good grounding. I, I think some people know what they want to do uh, to get into the arena of politics. And the, so they want to go to school to be uh, in, in political science. They go to school to be lawyers. Uh, they go to school to be public administrators. Uh, administrators. Um, so if you want to have a life in politics, I would say that get some formal training along the way. Um, but also um, be able to volunteer in, on some of your communities, uh, various committees. Uh, engage in community work, um, uh, volunteer, uh, in, in some things that are, that are either in your, uh, religion, uh, your organization, uh, become a member of an organization, uh, learn how to give back, learn how to be creative, learn how to think about things, learn how to do research, uh, to find out what others might be doing. You know, we have a, a number of organizations that we can rely upon to, to talk with and say, is this happening in your area? Oh, I found out that this is happening in your area. Tell me a little bit more. Be able to reach out to people and, and utilize some of those sources that are available to you. What type of temperament do you need to be successful in politics? I know it's not on my list here, <laughs> but just a thought. Uh, I don't know. You see all kinds of the state house. Yeah, you really do. Uh, you really do. Um, you know, over over my time there, you have people who are very vocal. I haven't seen any bullying kinds of activities uh, there, but there are people who can intimidate you with knowledge, uh, intimidate you maybe by being secure themselves and talking from a position of knowledge and fact. And uh, sometimes that begins to um, intimidate other people in, in various kinds of ways. But I think for the most part is that, you know, you should be a, a people person, uh, be able to listen to, uh, be a good listener, um, to have that. And, and then a, a person in how you, um, have that bedside manner, that doctor, patient, uh, that psychologist understanding, empathy, uh, understanding when, when constituents come with you with situations, uh, being resourceful. Uh, so the main thing I think is your listening ability and your empathy, uh, that you have, I think are very important. Uh, and, uh, um, then uh, coming across as, um, open and engaging and knowledgeable uh, with people. So I think that's the kind of. How can my listeners you know, pray for you? Oh, on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I, there's not a day, I can't say moments, but I think there's not a day that, uh, that I don't, uh, think about, uh, my role, um, how I hear our ministers when we, when our session starts about praying and praying for the decisions that we make up there. They're difficult decisions. You know, sometimes there are bills that I really like a lot, but there's one or two things in it that just does not make any sense and makes it more problematic and wish we had taking more time to deal with that. So pray for us as we make those difficult choices, uh, particularly because it just doesn't affect my neighbor. It doesn't affect my, my street. It doesn't affect my community. It doesn't just affect um, uh, my, my district. It, it, it affects all of Ohio. And you have to think about those, those uh, what your decision when you vote, how it's going to impact the number of people in, the United, in, in all of Ohio when you make that decision. So you get humbled. I, I do at least to get humbled. So I ask for their prayers as we make those kind of difficult decisions. Uh, when we're in, in, when somebody doesn't see 
the, uh, doesn't understand or see the way that you think, you know, help me to understand how I can see how that other person is thinking and give me some, uh, give me the strength and, and the presence to be able to talk with the person. And when we leave, we have, we leave with an understanding that we disagree without hating each other and not being civil with one another. Uh, and that we have another opportunity, hopeful, that we can come back and talk with each other about it. How is your district looking at it, economy-wise? Um, I, I think it's pretty much national, but I think here in Ohio and, and maybe in our district, you know, we are heavily relied upon manufacturing. And so uh, manufacturing as it relates to the individual being able to at one time being able to graduate and get a, a job in one of the uh, manufacturing companies here where your skill sets are not that demanding as they are now. And so we're having difficulty right now with getting the skill sets of individuals to be able to fill these jobs where robots or where the knowledge about how to how to address computerization, how to uh, make the computer do the the, the skill and and spe- uh, specific kinds of tolerance things and so forth, and dealing with the, uh, the the new kind of materials. One is you know the whole thing about 3D imaging right now and printing is 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 very new and and how those how to operate those machines and do the layering and so forth and and then the the carbon. Uh, the carbon fiber aspect and, and just the, the close tolerance and, you know, in the aerospace, uh, era, um, and, and how are we dealing with the engines and the fuels and everything like that is that, um, the people in this, com- in, in our communities, uh, may not have the skill sets to do that, but there are people who are coming in. There's people who are graduating from college and to have those experiences there. So I, I think over time we're, we're beginning to improve upon that area, but we're still in that whole transition area because some people have moved away. And because we don't have sand and water around us like some other areas, uh, the destination aspect and coming to the interior to work in Ohio is one of those problematic situations. As, and there's a report here recently on Governor Kasich's um, um, uh, r- original goal sets that they haven't met those goals yet in, in terms of uh, trying to get the jobs at where we want them to grow here. So there's still a lot of work that we have to do around that. <laughs> The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Do you pray for a politician? Do you think a politician can be a Christian? Do you think a politician should stand up for Christian principles? Do you think politicians should pray together? Do you want to see more Christians in politics? If you said yes to any of these questions, please join the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network. Find the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network on Facebook. Welcome back to Politically Wise. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. Is there anything that I haven't covered that you wanted to throw in this interview? Oh, I'll probably have to call you back as I leave here and say, oh, why didn't we talk about this, right? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it, uh, you know, with my experiences and background. Uh, uh, you know, educational-wise, we probably didn't talk about my my education. Uh, uh, you know, there are people there with uh, uh, a ver- variety of backgrounds of experiences, uh, you know, with college degrees to master's and doctor's degrees, people who served in the in the armed forces, um, uh, uh, chaplains and so forth, uh, over there. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's not any one certain way that we got, that we get there. Uh, but if the, you, you do have the discipline, uh, when you go to school to be able to, uh, look further into things, uh, uh, uh understand, uh, by reading, um, things that are happening and that might be able to be beneficial to you, influential with you, or to learn a little bit more about a topic. And so those are, that, those, those kind of formal, uh, uh, understandings I think are very helpful in terms of education. My school prepared me very well for that. I'm sure that other people who went to uh, different, uh, educational institutions, you know. How do you keep up with the reading? You know, uh, this stuff yes. comes in, you my, know. my wife says, uh, please get these stacks of paper out of here. It's, 
you have to stay on top of it, and it's, I, it's just very difficult. And I'm, I'm thankful that I have a good aide. I'm thankful that I, we have a good policy committee. I'm thankful that our ranking members um, engage uh, their committee members uh, to be able to talk when we uh, when we're at the caucus meetings to be able to help us do that. Uh, we have a good computerization system right now that we can pull, pull up the uh, bill and the bill analysis where we can get a good uh, firm understanding about that. And when we can in the downtimes, we read the whole bill. Uh, that's very essential. I try to do that all the time. But, you know, when you're on variety of committees and um, you're, you're, you, you're not always um, – uh, focused upon one particular industry, one particular area, like taxes all the time. I'm dealing with, um, legal issues. I'm dealing with, uh, uh, uh um, farm issues, uh, uh, all these. Just as, just as you do even today, you got a phone call on dealing with a justice issue. Yes, you're very right. And, you know, we were, uh, yesterday we were, uh, um, aware that a person was put to death and the kind of uh, medications that were given and the reaction to that person's medication. Um, got a call today to speak to my position on the death penalty. Um, man, it's, 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 it's difficult. Uh, I have visited prisons in my role, uh, talked to death row individuals. Um, you, you look at TV programs. Uh, you look at uh, things that happened 20 years ago with um, um, a, a person's a description of a person fit this person later on you find out that it wasn't that person now you're dealing with new dna uh, situations where it's proven that that person was not that person but you know if if there's not enough of those kind of evidential kinds of things a person who's on death row can be executed and later on you find out these things because you had poor representation or you had more research uh more evidence that came to light are people who lied, you know, about the, the, this, the situation or were covered up things and, you know, uh, uh, different kind of stories about that. Um, and so is, is it good to, to execute somebody? No. Um, you know, I, I think in many ways, if, if I was a prisoner and if I was, you know, lived in an area as big as the a door, uh, you know, the size and width of a door, I would go crazy. Um, and if you're locked in there without any contact, that's death in many ways. Uh, uh, I was a probation officer and every time I hear that door close up behind me, I know I don't want to go there. And when I visit people, uh, there, um, uh, you can just see that, you know, is that an excuse for what they did? No. Um, but life imprisonment until death, I, you know, is, is, um, in many ways, a, um, death anyway. Yeah. Death in many ways. Yeah. Well, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope I've been helpful, uh, informational and give you some kind of idea of what my life is like on a, on a given day, uh, when I'm away from my wife, <laughs> uh, doing things as we do as husbands and as families and, uh, um, you know, I'm a public servant. Uh, I try to be available to my constituents and, and offer them uh, uh, a sense of, of uh, relief, comfort, or at least somebody's working on their behalf, understands and listens and try to resolve uh, concerns there. I try to develop bills in that same way that's going to uh, impact uh, positively for the lives of our uh, citizens, albeit youth, all the way up to uh, adults and seniors here in our community. Well, then, thank you again. This has been interviewing Representative Roland Winburn. Give us the re your representative for what district again? The 43rd House District. 43rd House right. District. The show is called Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Thank you for listening today. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. Now, here's your blessing. Blessings today from Psalms 13, verses 1 through 6. You are blessed 
when you trust in God's mercy. You are blessed when you rejoice in your salvation. You are blessed when you sing unto the Lord. You are blessed when you receive God's bounty.